yeah, um, thank you for attending my talk. Uh, and thank you for the introduction again. Um, so aligned with the theme of this uh, 20th uh, anniversary event of BOWAPS, uh, at uh, uh, Chusata just mentioned, my talk is about uh, an ongoing research and also a proposal that uh, also based on the past, but also look ahead to the long-term solution for security and privacy of the web. So um, let uh, review a little bit about the history of the, um, the web. Uh, so the, the, you know that the web like started like about 30 years ago, right? When it just started as HTML. Uh, and then they have an application with the e-commerce and then social network, right? And the current trends in the web is um, AI service, uh, AI driven services, right? And you can see from this diagram. And by the way, I borrowed this from a Medium, an article from Fabric uh, Ventures. Uh, no, but Bleach just ignore the other stuff like Bitcoin and the other thing, right? So the, uh, this is not focused on, um, uh, on my talk, right? So I just want to buy out that the state of the web and also I want to point out here that we have OWAPS community here like for the last 20 years, right? So, um, so let, let's review about the foundation of the web a little bit. Um, right? uh, I, I assume that everyone from familiar with the web, but, um, the, but just, just, just ensure that we are on the same page in this. Um, so the web, even like how many uh, evolution or something uh, happen in the future, uh, the web technology right now is still based on the HTTP protocol, right? So where the web browser will send uh, the request to the server and then the server send the response to the client. So that is the basics. And, um, and nowadays the web like uh, contain a lot of other things, but the thing that the, the basic of the web is they have a, just the plan test with HTML, uh, JavaScript, uh, right? And, and also some CSS for, uh, for the um, uh, uh, execution, right? Execution in, 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 in the browser. So uh, nowadays, if you can see from the picture earlier, web 3.0 have a lot of code running in the browser. It's kind of the edge computing. Um, and and um, here is a statistics you may know that like JavaScript is now every, in every single uh, web page, right? Uh, and, and that is the dominant uh, programming language for the web, right? So, um, so let's uh, um, give you some example. Uh, let me give you some example about the typical web page or website, web application nowadays. So normally is, um, it's not only just the, 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 the that what, what you see. It's also have a lot of internal and external code uh, running like behind the scene, right? And normally it's also include the uh, uh, third party code. Uh, and uh, when like, for example, your web page or your website include a code from somewhere else, normally you trust that code. Um, and you include that, like the developer will include that. Like, I mean, here I call that by the host or the developer. Um, so here I just show you an example that um, we see like on the left-hand side, we see at the user, but on the right-hand side, you see there, there is the tool that I use in my browser. They, is, they display for like how many um, like external domain and the code that included by, you know, uh, in this case, eBay.com. Uh, and uh, there are also all the tunes that they, they, they know that uh, they, they track, uh, they, uh, they know like how many tracker that track uh, you during this uh, uh, visiting to, to the web, right? Um, and, and these, are, by the way, these are like popular, uh, the browser tune like uh, uBlock Origin or uh, Rostery or AdBlock, something like that, right? So, <clears throat> So this is a general um, uh, web application and the web uh, in browser right now. Um, so my research is about like security and the, like you know the concern and the privacy concern about the web right now for the user. 
So let's review about uh, the, um, oh, by the way, there's a, a statistics earlier that um, like a lot, like most of the top 10,000 website include like ethno web. That is a typical one that I just, just want to say, right? So, um, so, so I want to review about some major uh, security mechanisms in the browser uh, for, for uh, JavaScript code that, uh, because it's run in the browser. So JavaScript code download um, from the remote server normally, and then it's run inside the browser, right? Uh, on, the, on the fly. So the security of course must be guaranteed. And in this case, the, uh, the execution will be in the sandbox environment. Uh, of course, the code cannot direct access to your computer uh, and they have some limitation about, about the access to the computer. Otherwise, they can do whatever they want in the computer, right? That is one, one mechanism. The other mechanism, and it's well known in the web, it's called same origin policy, right? So assume that um, because the browser open like too many websites like at the same time and you know uh, the user can visit different sites. So there are some confidentiality uh, inside that site. Uh, and then the browser only keep for that website. So for example, you may know about cookie, right? So cookie is the sensitive information uh, and it's only um, uh, share among the origin. Origin is stand for, uh, is, is, uh, is, is, formed by domain protocol and the port, right? So example here, like if you include, or uh, if you are in this domain, you cannot access the data of the other domain, right? So um, that is like one major security mechanism. And um, the other one later on was called content security policy. It's this uh, additional layer uh, to protect the attack, for example, to cross the, one of the most popular attack is cross-site scripting attack that the attacker can inject JavaScript code and execute JavaScript code, right? Um, however, uh, there are some, uh, there are some limitation uh, with this, uh, this mechanism, right? Uh, so um, let, let, uh, I give you a scenario uh, where, uh, let's say the website, like for example, mysite.com <clears throat> include the code uh, from let's say ad.com as I mentioned. So in this case, you see that when we include the code from external domain or, or remote domain, right? This code is a different domain. However, when it's include, it's belong to the same origin at the hosting page. Like in this case, will be my, my site.com, right? So the issue here is that, um, that, and this is a, like, this is still the limitation for this is that when my site.com include the code from ad.com, the my site.com developer, or I mean, the, this, in this case, you can't provider, on way trust that ad.com will not harm or will not do maliciously in that mysite.com, of course, right? So it's, uh, this means that it's based on the, the, the trustworthy, right? So the provider will trust its partners that um, the code will be included. And then um, of course, in that case, the provider have to whitelist the, this uh, third party saying that, okay, you are allowed to do this thing. But the issue here is that the, in the scenario, the code is not controlled by my site.com in this scenario, right? So it's host like outside, it's host outside. And then, um, and then in the, I mean, in, in, in reality, the code can be changed at any time, right? And, and seriously, like there's a case that the code host by outside can be compromised by attacker, not my site.com, but at.com, for example, right? So, um, so in reality, that kind of attack uh, like happen, right? So um, let, me, let me give you a, uh, a real example that happened years ago, uh, like on the website, uh, you may know about it's Reuters.com, right? So, uh, so a couple of years back, uh, user of the Reuters.com uh, experience 
that uh, when they visit an article news, it's related at the user to an attacker base like this, uh, and and it's happened in the past. So the common sense in this scenario uh, clearly that Reuters.com server will attack, right? Um, at, at I mean um, that is the, the the user of the writer. They, they you know okay, something wrong happened on Reuters.com, right? But actually, it's not like that. Actually, Reuters.com had not been attacked, but Reuters.com website is attacked in this scenario by a code injection via the compromised ad network. So the attacker inject the code in the advertisement network. And in this case, you, you, you see the scenario I, I showed earlier, right? This is the kind of third party JavaScript. Um, uh, and, and normally when we include like that, it's touched by, by the, the the Reuters.com in this case, because this is a very common, you know, the revenue system, right? So, um, so at the user, uh, what do we concern about, right? At the user, so in this case, for example, like what, what we concern about. So uh, what we worry about this. So Reuters.com example I showed you earlier is example of the, about security problem, but also similarity of that is the threat of uh, privacy as well, right? So my research um, is to, you know, consider the, like what the user will uh, worry about and what user want for this. And the most importantly, I want to protect the user from, uh, you know, this kind of threat and also the privacy leakage you may experience in the uh, example of the eBay.com that I mentioned earlier, like, user have been tracked, right? Um, and related to this question, uh, there's a lot of study um, out there. So for example, uh, one of the studies saying that, a couple of studies saying that the citizen um, maybe normally just just the bit tech to uh, take care about their privacy, right? So they, they don't know like whether the privacy will be protected or not. And um, uh, also, we also have another study say that, okay, uh, we are not only just, uh, for example, just block everything. Um, they, they, they just want to receive some, you know, uh, useful information, for example, target ads, right? They, they, they don't want to just, just block everything because um, that's useful to them. And, 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 and recently there's a, like design about like where we, uh, at the user, we can have advanced method to uh, to control some, you know, the, uh, the data that, that can be shared. So, um, so these are the, uh, kind of, I say the dilemma for, for the web user, right? So, um, one hand, uh, you want to have a, like the protection, but the other hand, there will be the, you know, the way that they, they want to, 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 to receive the, the information. For example, nowadays, the uh, AI driving uh, in the web 3.0, right? So what are the solutions currently for this kind of scenario, right? So let me review uh, some current approaches. So um, as I show you an example in the couple of slide back, uh, there's a short term approach, for example, the user uh, uh, can install the browser extension like Blocker, or maybe they have an in-browser uh, blocking, for example, Brave browser, now they, they block things automatically, right? However, this has brought, as you can see, that it's still, it's still like an on or nothing, like right? allow or just disallow everything. Um, and I mean, this is uh, about the, the advertisement and the tracking uh, thing like that, right? Um, so it's still not certified the dilemma that we just discussed, right? Uh, there are also more long-term uh, mechanism. For example, um, uh, um, the uh, uh, you may hear about like do not track or privacy by design or uh, platform like it's called uh, P for P three P. And also recently, a lot of uh, laws, uh, you know, European law and U.S. law that they require the. Uh, the data should be protected uh, uh, for the user, right? However, the 
um, um, the the um, this mechanism it's just the you know the mechanism but there's no way that um, to ensure that the mechanism can be uh, can be uh, applied in the reality and uh, additional to this uh, there's more open challenge for that like for example uh, I mentioned to you about the same origin policy right uh, the third party code can be malicious or can be uh, compromised um, so um, um, and also there's no control from the user end to, to control their data to, to be shared or not to be shared. And most importantly, there is no formal method, formal insurance mechanism to warranty about the, uh, if the agreement or the rule are enforced, right? So that is, uh, these are the, uh, the challenges, uh, the motivation for my, 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 my work on uh, code origin uh, policy as broad, right? So I will discuss with you about the broad right, uh, briefly. So my approach is called code origin policy. Um, and the approach is to play the reference security reference monitor at runtime to mediate the security and privacy like behavior, right? And it's stay the, the novelty here is stay the origin of the color of the API. So in that case, I, I call it that term, uh, that, that, that term is that, uh, code origin, right? So in this approach, uh, in my approach, the basic policy will be defined at agreement uh, between the user and the provider. Um, and, and normally it will be developed by, by the provider. So like the, and the developer. Uh, so in this feature, you can see that the developer develop an app and then they can include some JavaScript code. And then they can uh, yield the uh, code origin policy that I provide, customize that for this application particularly, and then is included into the pay. So in that case, we have a product that we have the, uh, the policy in check. Um, the formal policy is not just agreement, right? And then where at runtime, uh, this can be enforced by a, a reference monitor, right? So uh, in that case, uh, the, the browser can uh, enforce the, that with runtime monitor and the the most importantly here is that uh, it will be warranty with the formal method later on. Um, I will show you that in the, in the other slide. But um, the user, in this case, the user can also edit the policy uh, like according uh, to, to what they, uh, they, um, they, they expect, right? So, um, so I give you like a little bit more, uh, like it's not too deep, the technical detail, but a little bit more about uh, my uh, approach here. So the idea is that in the regular uh, execution, right, the API con will be executed in the JavaScript uh, right, environment. And of course, there will be a stack to con that function, right? So our uh, approach is that we put the reference monitor and then we disconnect the, this con directly, we will uh, wrap the con to our monitor, and then we have a the, the policy, and we have a code origin policy there, right? So at runtime, we will also check the policy and we check the con stack to know okay where the code come from, uh, and and um, uh, and then we we execute the code accordingly, right? So I just give you some example of uh, the code origin policy that we have. For example, we can define the policy that different origin have different access, different um, uh, and different uh, permission, right? Uh, and, and more than that, we can have a more fine-grained policy. For example, we can define that, you know, dynamic policy, for example, the bow policy limit the number of access, wireless policy, uh, history-based policy, and all of these are like, based on the code uh, of the origin, it's mean that where the code come from, right? So um, I give you uh, just the illustration about one uh, prototype implementation we did. Uh, so it is, um, um, the tool is on my web that we published like, uh, years ago that uh, we implement at the browser extension, 
And during the runtime, we call the stack and then we get the origin of that. And then we apply the policy that based on the origin for, for the website. Um, so a little bit more technical, I give you um, the example of the policy, how we enforce this. Uh, so for example, the next policy is uh, we monitor the uh, cookie access uh, and then we, um, so cookie access to the action, right? So we will see, okay, where the cookie, uh, where the origin come from. And then we will check the policy if it's allowed or not allowed based on the, um, the, the idea of the code origin, where the code come from, and also the policy for that code, right? So some example we have earlier is the, you know, just the basic information flow. We track the source, we, and then we track the scene. Uh, if there is the information leaked from you know, shock to scene, and then we can uh, enforce the policy saying, okay, um, we can do some automatically enforcement on that and we prevent something that the information leaked can happen at one time. In some case, we can ask the user uh, because we may not know whether it's allowed or not, right? So, so that is part of the code origin uh, policy enforcement. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the second part of my approach is that the formal insurance. So, um, so for the formal insurance, um, and this is, uh, will be my long-term uh, research vision as well. Um, so in this, uh, in this vision, I anticipate that, uh, and, and my mechanism will allow the code with the, uh, with the, the web would have a code origin policy, right? And then when the one that I showed you earlier, that is executed in with the monitor, but there's no, um, no formal insurance, right? So my, my research um, now is try to ensure that when we have a code origin policy like this, we also have a tool to generate the formal like proof that uh, we call the certificate, right? So this certificate will be together with the uh, with the, the 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 code and also the policy, and at runtime, it will be verify the the if the code already had the code origin policy, uh, so that it's run to two things, right? The first thing is it can be monitored to ensure it's not violate violate the policy. The second thing is that to ensure that this code have this kind of enforcement at one time. And so, so at for now, we explore a couple of tunes and um, like for example, the current tune in, in informal methods, but um, we didn't have a, like the final result that yet, but we are we're still working on like, okay, how we generate this uh, uh, policy and uh, I mean the certificate and how we verify this, right? So, um, right, so in the team of um, like my research, I just want like, um, uh, like we do for this uh, anniversary uh, event, right? So I just review about uh, the related work, my work that related to, um, to the code origin policy I just mentioned to you. I, the way that I um, have is the lightweight help of any JavaScript that I, more than 10 years back. And I also presented OWAPS like 2010. Um, that is the basic idea for, for the, uh, you know, how to monitor the, the behavior of the web. And then we also uh, have a, a system that we apply the uh, different policy for different origin. And recently I moved to the code origin policy that I just mentioned. And I also provide the mechanism for the user to modify the, 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 the policy at runtime as well. And I just have a first prototype in code origin policy implement in the browser. Um, so in, in the long-term vision, um, I just mentioned to you, the idea here is that um, we can have uh, like the code origin policy uh, with kind of the 
formal privacy agreement is not just a test, but there are some formal way to define that in the code origin policy at the development phase. And then we will use the tool, we, we develop a tool to ensure that the certificate will be generated and will be verified at the, um, at the, the uh, uh, runtime, right? So there's a lot of challenges here. Uh, and uh, for example, what type of policy are useful? We need to do the user study about this. Uh, another way is, okay, how we input the regulation, the laws into this policy. And the most uh, challenging thing that we are working on is uh, like how to generate this and verify this to ensure the, uh, the formal insurance, right? Okay, so uh, yeah, so that is um, about my, uh, you know, my talk. Um, just uh, review back the, uh, the web history again. So uh, my hope is that uh, we have question mark here uh, that the code origin policy will be the, uh, the future solution to, to, to provide a you know, formal uh, insurance for, for, for the security and privacy for the web and the, for the web user, right? Um, so just three takeaway uh, points. So, uh, of course, the, the current uh, mechanism of the security is like, not sufficient because they are, allow some attack and you know, uh, privacy concern. So we uh, provide the uh, approach from code origin policy can have a fine grained policy uh, enforcement. Um, and then this can empower the user to have a, like, more control on the data. And we work toward to the formal insurance to ensure that uh, we can have a formal proof that the policy enforcement can provide the protection and transparent without just working. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um,